Asuncio Mercedes of the Dominican Republic, and Charlie Magri, the European flyweight champion from London's East End. Yesterday morning's headlines reflected an uneasy feeling shared by many that Magri's task could be too big for him in view of those two inside the distance defeats from Mexican rivals. Had the big chance perhaps come just too late? Mercedes was not afraid, it seemed, to come to London, Magri's own city, to put the title at stake. In truth, it had taken the combined weight of London's top promoters, Harry Levine, Mickey Duff and Mike Barrett, to persuade Mercedes here with a reward of £80,000. By the time Mercedes came to the Wembley Arena ring last night, informed opinion on Charlie's chances had not changed. A hard betting opinion makes Mercedes the favourite. The last I heard, Magri was on offer at 6-4 to four against. Ray Solis, Mexican referee. 12 rounds, the new distance for WBC title fights for the flyweight championship. And the familiar little figure of Charlie Magri looks quite small against the much taller man, the champion Mercedes. Mercedes five feet five, and Charlie about an inch and a half shorter. But the official statistics show surprisingly that Charlie's got the longer reach, some four inches. Mercedes first defense. And a huge purse for him of 80,000 pounds. Magri gets about a quarter of that, but then he's got the chance to win the title on his own ground. They wear eight ounce gloves. The Magri camp gave in to the request from the champions camp for the bigger gloves. In Britain, normally, we wear six ounce gloves at this weight, but these are eight ounce. And there are four ropes around the ring, that's unusual, but that's a new rule from the World Boxing Council, a new safety measure. Magri attacking hard, a low one from Mercedes, not seen by Solis, the referee. And Mercedes goes to work with the good left jab we knew he had. turned out in force to cheer Charlie on. In recent fights, Magri has been seen to lose strength after about six rounds. So the general opinion is that uh, perhaps he needs to get this over in the early rounds. Hooking hard with two hands and chasing up the champion. But Mercedes stays calm and quick with his hands. That's a fine attack by Magri. Mercedes weathers it. Good left hook by Magri. Closing seconds of the first, tremendous attack by the challenger Magri. And there was the danger sign for Magri at the end of the round, when Mercedes came back with a hard right on the bell. And Magri picks up a slight raise around the right eye. Looks as though it may be on the eyelid. So there was drama enough in that opening round for any world title fight with Magri trying to get it over quickly, expending a lot of energy and then finding right at the end that Mercedes had a good right hand to come back at him. Look at me, look at me. Second down, round two. Mercedes slow to come from the corner. So Magri goes into the second session with the 
slight mark on the right eye. And Mercedes comes out strong for this second round, punching with some venom. Mercedes 25. Magri 26. Champion shows a little clever champion like bobbing and weaving on the ropes. This looks very unlikely to go 12 rounds at this pace. Magri trying to re-establish Britain's one-time supremacy in the flyweight division. There have been eight generally recognized British world champions at this weight, but if Magri picks up more punches like that, he won't be the ninth. Magri daring Mercedes to go with him, punch for punch. Testing his punch against the champions. And at this moment, the champion doesn't look to me to be outpunched. These are two very hard opening rounds for both men. Both men connecting hard, and Magri staggers a little. Back he comes. Mixing it up as though they're out in the street, not in a ring. Unbelievably exciting. You'll never see a more open fight than this. Punch for punch between these two. Who's going to crack? Mercedes seems to come back from these close quarter encounters just a little stronger than Magri. Magri's heart and soul, all the years of effort being put into these opening rounds. And the crowd appreciate it. And Lawless asks Magri to come in lower, get down, make him miss. Take some of the strength up. You can now see the mark above the eye. Second round, round three. Two opening rounds of exceptional fighting quality. Now we shall settle down into an orthodox attack and defense. Charlie offers his chin and gets it punched. five and a half years as a pro being brought to bear on this only two defeats in his career both times from Mexicans and now another Latin American standing between him and the great ambition Place, not surprisingly, has slowed. The 
say this jab finding its way through the defense. Angry's face looks marked. from the Dominican Republic. Looks cool, calm and confident. He may feel he's weathered the worst that Charlie can offer. The dark head bobs this way and that. So this from Mercedes, he takes a punch well. Charlie's made him take a few. Three rounds completed. Maybe may be a little ahead. But this is a useful champion. He didn't crumble under the early onslaught. And he's never, ever been shaken out of his car. Second up, round four. The pale body of Magri, the swarthy figure of the champion. Dark and light. Just the way Terry Lawless told him. Trying to come in underneath. Trying to slip the jabs coming to him. And Magri does force his way underneath. And he pummels the ribs of the champion. This is one tremendous effort from Charlie Magri. Whatever the outcome of this, he won't be faulted forever. He really is giving him some stick around the body. He's found a way in there, all right. And by getting in underneath, he stopped the side, he's getting it in. Mercedes is now trying to fight out of the crouch himself. These two tiny figures belying their size with the strength of their punching. Good right from Mercedes. Charlie took it well. And still Charlie works his way underneath with those Hooks trying to prize the man open. and really did give him some stick. Our three throws his combination back to a jab. 
has done so much attacking that he may well be out in front on the judges' cards. He's taken the fight to the champion all the way through. He's certainly not come off scot free, but he's done a lot of work. So he may be going into this fifth round with a useful little lead. And again, he chases relentless pursuit of the title and the man. You begin to wonder now whether he might just not knock the heart out of Mercedes. Can he keep it going? The little man from London will not be denied. I've never seen him look so hungry. One low from Charlie. He is giving this champion one tremendous fight. Mercedes, for the first time, looks a little shattered. He can't quite believe the storm that's sweeping over him. champion from side to side of the ring sweeping him from one corner to another putting together a relentless barrage of punches and Mercedes swings wildly and a little desperately and they test each other's strength and courage to the nth degree it is marvellous stuff. If ever two men deserve a minute's rest, these two do. And Magri's had another wonderful round. And Magri looks him full in the eyes of the bell and says, how about that? Well, I've got sitting with me the man who last held this World Flyweight Championship for Britain, and I saw him win it in 1966, Wee Walter McGowan from Scotland. How do you think this one's going, Walter? Well, Harry, as we can see, Charlie started off in his usual fashion. He's taken the fight to Mercedes. He hasn't left, he hasn't left the guy alone for a minute. The, the dangerous thing is he's working very well at Mercedes' body, but he's taken too long to get his hands back up to guard his head after he's finished working on the body and he's leaving himself open for one of two hooks from Mercedes. But I know if he keeps these body punches up, he keeps very as close as he can to Mercedes. He'll wear this guy doing this fight will no go 12 rounds. Second up, round six. We're now coming to the halfway stage. champion bent over now trying to get away bend his body back away from those punches underneath and little Charlie will not be denied in he goes again now then 
can he destroy the fighting ambition of Mercedes? The jab still coming out from the champion. He still does some work himself. The question now just has to be, can Magri keep this sort of pace up? Can he keep the storm going across this man? everything Magri in pursuit of the world title Mercedes finding the target a little more easily in the sixth brilliant battle out and out aggression from Magri and skilled and cool boxing from Mercedes, who's come through several crises and come through them well, and he looks strong. He predicted he'd knock Charlie out in the middle rounds. We're in the sixth. And he hurts him. Mercedes frowns, holds his glove up was hurt by a body punch, I think. No, he's not. It's a butt, I think, because he's bleeding badly from the left eye. And he's frowning angrily. And there's quite a bad cut over the left eye. And that must presumably have come from a butt. And that is what he was complaining about. And the referees had a look at it. And so another crisis now faces the champion with a bad cut by the left eye. And so now, with Greece liberally smeared all over the cut, Mercedes faces danger. And they're very slow to get him off that stool. The melting grease dripping down his face. A British referee would have had that wiped off. assault again forces Mercedes to swing back in desperation and now he risks further damage to the eye on seven the eye bleeds Magri goes for the finish can he get it and the referee is calling the doctor to have a look at it he's calling the doctor in to look at it it's not over yet he wants the Adrian Watson's opinion and Adrian Watson says he can't go on and Britain has the world flyweight champion Charlie is the champion it's champagne Charlie is my name he's done it for Britain 16 years we've waited for another world flyweight champion we've got him and his name is Charlie Magri Seven. Charlie Magri becomes the ninth British world champion at this weight. And he stands and takes the applause from a standing crowd. The whole of Wembley rises to him. Mickey Duff lifts him up. Joyous moments for British boxing in the famous old Wembley Arena. 26 year old Magri. 
He waited a long time. He felt at one time he'd never win this title or even get a chance at it. And he did, and he's won it. What moments they were, Charlie. And tell me a bit, how did you feel at that moment? Well, that moment, no, I couldn't believe it. I'm sorry I'm talking like this because he caught me in the throat. He got you in the throat? Yeah. <laughs> I think you've been doing a bit of talking already today. Go on, be honest with me. What time did you get to bed last night? I got to bed about five past three. And I got up at about five o'clock. Uh-huh. Now, with you, you've brought along Jackie, your wife. It's nice to see you, Jackie. Now, come on, uh, tell me the story. Uh, did, did Charlie really at one time, was he really serious about giving the game up? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> he just lost his confidence, really, you know. And, and you were the girl who got him back in, did you? Yeah, he needed boosting up again. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did you have to say to him to say, come on, Charlie, you, you've got to go through with this? Huh? What did you tell him? Oh, he just told him he, he was the best in the world, you know, and that he could get there every day and mm -hmm. beat the world champion, you know. You were right. Yeah. Now then, Charlie was in this very studio on that seat last week uh, in this program and said to me that you would never watch the fight. And in fact, I think he was rude enough to say you'd go and hide yourself in the loo. <laughs> Is that what you did? Yeah, I did. Did you? What, right through the fight? After the second round. So oh, you stopped for... Ah, you saw the start, did you? I wasn't watching, I was looking <laughs> the other way, but at the end of the second round, you know, I made an exit. Did you? Yeah. And then uh, how, how did you know it was all over and it, it was all right? Well, by the cheering outside, you know, we had the crowd really cheering. And it, uh -huh. just, the place, it just went wild, you know, and I just asked the steward what had happened, and he said, Mankley's done it, you know, he stopped him. And back he came. <laughs> Lovely. Marvellous <laughs> moments for the pair of you. Do you think this is the best performance you've ever put up in the ring, Johnny? Um, yeah, I do, because Mercedes was a very good fighter. He was a world champion and he wanted to knock me out. Mm. And I stood up to him well. You look to me like a man who wanted to knock him out. I mean, I've never seen you. I mean, I've seen you fight and box a lot of very good performances, but you seem more determined than I've ever seen you before last night. Well, it was that one, that one thing, it was for the world title. That's what I've been waiting for for a long time. Let's bring Terry in a minute. Well, now you must be, you must be so pleased about this, Terry. I mean, you've all waited a long time, haven't you? And yeah. now it's finally come true. Yep. Two. Did you ever despair, uh, oh. like Charlie, that uh, the chance might never come? Oh, many times, many times. It took a tremendous amount of courage from Charlie's point of view. I think you and I are two of his biggest fans and longest fans. I think, I think you've, <laughs> you've seen him probably longer than I have, I think. Uh, but it, it, it's taken a tremendous amount of courage on Charlie's part to put up with the remarks that have been made and mm -hmm. you know, words that have been written, things have been said. But he's done it, he's pulled himself through. It seemed to me that the fight changed course for the better for Charlie when he suddenly started rolling underneath and working up to the body with those punches coming up to the body and Mercedes didn't seem to know what to do about that. No, well, we, 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 we'd been working in the time, all the time in the gym on trying to get Charlie to take rounds like uh, of rest. And uh, I was getting a bit panicky, to be honest, at the pace of the fight, even after two rounds. And we were screaming at Charlie in between the, the second and the third round to get down low mm -hmm. uh, and keep out of the way for a little while. And as soon as he got down low, of course, he saw the big open space there of the body. And he hit him once. And once he called him once, we, we told him to stay there. Well, Charlie, it's all come true for you. I think everybody in this country is delighted for you. And you know what's going to happen now? It's going to stop us, the BBC, keep showing you beaten by Diaz, isn't it? That's At last right. you've got rid of that. <laughs> got rid of right? Yeah. <laughs> it's taken a while to get rid of the other fellow, the Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, congratulations to all three of us. Marvellous. Thank you. Charlie Magri, our new world champion. He'll now have the attention of the media constantly upon him as he looks forward 